episode three of the Bitcoin Show. Today's a really, really big day. Thank you all for joining us. Today in Studio 3 at Only One TV, we have Gavin Andresen, the number one tech lead of the Bitcoin Project, and uh, also our regular hosts of the Bitcoin Show and El Show the Bitcoin in Spanish, our Manny Mena and Edward Gao, and Live on Skype, we have one of the founders of TradeHill.com, the new trading, uh, Bitcoin purchasing and selling a uh, trading site called TradeHill, and that's Jared Kenna. So welcome. Thanks, Bruce. Great to be here. <laughs> and I should say uh, that Gavin obviously just came straight here from the CIA. So tell us the story. It's, it's true. Um, I was contacted by um, InQtel, which actually is an investment arm of the CIA, so it's actually a, a private company whose job is to find interesting new technologies and find out if the CIA can, can use them for the kinds of things that the CIA does. Um, every year they have an emerging technology conference that uh, they put on where they invite ordinary people uh, doing interesting things to, to come and present. And um, this year the theme of that conference was the mobility of money. And so obviously they're interested in Bitcoin uh, because Bitcoin makes your money very mobile. You can pay anybody anywhere in the world with your Bitcoins. Very. Um, so they gave me a call uh, after thinking pretty hard about it. Um, I decided I would do it because it's an open source project. I figured, you know, going to the CIA and talking very openly about what Bitcoin is and uh, what it can do. Uh, wouldn't hurt the project. So it's not a secret. It, it's it's not a secret. It's totally open, right? It is. So, uh, were they interested in it as an investment? But like, like CIA invests in things. Is that what they were thinking? Well, the CIA doesn't tell you what they're thinking. <laughs> That's probably so. So it's a little bit <laughs> hard to figure out. I mean, the other people who were, um, and I, I should say, this was a three-day conference. The first day is unclassified, so I can talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, the second and third days actually are classified and I wasn't invited. Wow. Okay. So, um, yeah, I know, I know what happened when I, I know what went on the first day. I can talk about what went on the first day. Uh, I have no idea what they're doing now. Oh, I'm sure they're talking about the second and third day. They're talking about the first day. <laughs> <laughs> but secretly. So, um, yeah. But, you know, they, they, they had somebody from PayPal there. They had mm -hmm. um, economists from the Federal Reserve Bank was there. They had uh, somebody from Facebook Payments. Wow. Was there? Um, Interesting. And also a person from Barclays Bank who's doing the visa mobile phone payment system that's being taken off in Kenya, I believe it is. Wow. Lots of really interesting stuff, and I made some really great connections there. Wow, nice, nice. <laughs> it's amazing. It's mind-boggling. So, what do you think their interest in um, in Bitcoin is? You, they don't tell you, right? Well, they don't tell me. I mean, you can speculate. I mean, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, paying people covertly is part of what the CIA does. Mm -hmm. And so a payment system that they could use to, to pay something, pay mm -hmm. somebody covertly mm -hmm. is, is very interesting to them. Who knew? A lot of people might speculate that the, the, the government would be uh, come down against Bitcoin, but they could actually figure out how to use it for their own purposes, just like everyone else does. <laughs> right. That's the branch of government. Right. The Senate, they're against it. You look at the CIA, they actually see some usefulness out of it. Interesting, yeah, that's right. Who knows? Yeah, so you can look at the good, you can look at the bad. It just uh, depends. So, wait, so um, what do you think of all this, Jared? Can you hear us? anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know anybody. Well, actually, I, I can't say that now. Now I know one person who's at, looked at that uh, uh, website that sells illicit things, but uh, nobody that I know in the Bitcoin world actually uh, goes to that website and purchases anything. I mean, it's really, really hard to get there. First of all, it's very, very technical. You have to be running special software through a special, like, alternate internet security 
system and then have another level of security on top of that. So the ordinary person can't even get there. I've been trying. Have you tried? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's, it's amazing, I mean, from what they say. But, uh, but the thing is, that's what makes headlines and that's what people like to talk about because anything that's, you know, scandalous makes headlines. But the fact is that cash is really the best form of payment for drugs. Probably always has been and always will be. 99.99999% of drug transactions, I'm sure, happen with the U.S. dollar in cash. So, I mean, I don't think we should outlaw cash quite yet. You know, similarly, cars and cell phones, you know, I mean, just because something can be used to uh, purchase something illegal doesn't mean that, you know, there's anything wrong with the, the tool. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting. When I was at the CIA, of course, I did get asked the question, you know, what do you think about you know, bad people using Bitcoin for bad things. But I wasn't alone. They also asked that of the PayPal person and, you know, the, the person from the Federal Reserve actually was very frank about saying, you know, U.S. Federal Reserve notes are used for bad things. And uh, wow. he was actually... Um, he admitted that. <laughs> oh, he, 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 he was very upfront. Actually, I really liked him. I thought yeah. he, was, uh, he was very good and, and, and you know, explicitly said that if you make payments more convenient, for ordinary people, you're going to make them more convenient for criminals too. That's of just course. the nature of these. It's just like all the internet, email, everything. Technology makes things easier. Exactly. I mean, they talk a lot about prepaid cards, you know, and there's a lot of a lot of uh, controversy over prepaid cards being used for criminal activities. But you know, the benefits outweigh the costs. Absolutely. So. We have a million more questions for you. I want to I want to thank our sponsors really quickly. This episode three of the Bitcoin Show is brought to you by Ambivert Creative. AmbivertCreative.com. They create your corporate identity. So they'll do everything from your website, your logo design, stationery, all that sort of thing. And Blue Canary Nightlight.com, which creates a beautiful little blue canary nightlight. Uh, very, you know, very nice. Uh, and they accept Bitcoin for payment. Uh, really nice little product. The, the couple created one for their daughter and they decided to make a business and they sell nightlights for Bitcoin. And BitcoinBonus.com, which is really cool because anytime you shop over anything, almost anything online, go to BitcoinBonus.com and you will find a link for that .com site where you can order something and you'll get payback. You'll get basically kickbacks in the form of Bitcoin. And it's excellent. I've heard amazing reviews from people before they even became a sponsor. And TradeHill.com. TradeHill.com is the new easy way to buy bitcoins and sell bitcoins online the new exchange site which uh, Jared Ken is uh, is one of the founders of so we want to thank them so so back to this what what did um, what did the uh, CIA I mean did you get feedback from them any any hints about um, their thoughts or their direction or how much they know about it um, no <laughs> <laughs> They don't I mean, even speak. It's I just did, they just listen, right? I did, well, no. I, I mean, you can you can you can find out what some of their concerns are by listening to their questions. Um, you know, I, I I definitely appealed to some of the the more geeky people in the audience. You know, they have geeks who work there, and they have suits who work there, and they, you know, yeah. all range of people who work there. And at this conference, there were you know a good mix of people. I think pretty much all of the other talks were kind of on the suit level. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had a, a you know a couple of people come up to me afterwards and saying they thought Bitcoin was really cool, thought it was great. Uh, had one interesting interaction that um, I actually sold the Bitcoin while I was there. Um, you sold the Bitcoin to him? To to uh -huh. one of the one of the one of the CIA people. Oh, cool. uh, because I had I had showed Bitbills. I had a couple of Bitbills in my wallet as you know an example of a physical Bitcoin, a Bitcoin you can hold, mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah. He thought that was very cool and, and uh, wanted to buy one from me so he could show his boss. Bit bills are awesome. Um, bit bills are awesome. Actually. We met uh, Doug actually as a sidebar is uh, uh, one of the creators of Bit bills that I actually asked you about because when it first was created, I called up Gavin right away and I said, "Who who are these people? Do we know them? Do we trust them?" And he said, "Oh yeah, absolutely. They're it's Lama from the forums and all that." And he actually just moved to New York, oh, so we cool. he, like we've been hanging out for the last couple of days and he, they're awesome. I, they're going to be a new sponsor. You'll see. But anyway, <laughs> they're awesome. I love Bit bills. But uh, so the so actually you sold a Bitcoin to a CIA agent. And, and if that's illegal, do you think it was entrapment? No. <laughs> I, I got to admit, did that I, cause I, your mind? my mind. It's like, am I being set up here? Is I taking cash for this Bitcoin? No, uh, I, we're, we're pretty yeah. sure. I will have to do that. I'll need to go back and figure out how much I paid for 
the bit. Bill. Yeah, well, based on somebody's, oh, sort of a bit, Bill, yeah. Absolutely. Based on some people's predictions, that could be a million dollars before it's over. Well, well, for the record, I sold it for 20 bucks, so. Mm. But will you have to declare taxes on the million or the 20? The tw well, <laughs> I don't have the bit bill anymore. I have the $20 bill. Oh, so. well, that'll be worth 10 by then. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jared, what do, you, what do you say about all this? Oh, it's, it's interesting. Um, it's, it's kind of funny. You know, things happen so fast in this uh, Bitcoin universe. Uh, I was just talking about how a month ago I was looking forward to this interview, and I was just saying, man, I can't wait for Dad to get out to the CAA, and now I'm actually part of it. So, uh, it's amazing how fast things change um, and the speed that, that Bitcoin has picked up. Uh, right. Things like BitBills, they just, they just appear out of nowhere. You know? yeah. And uh, there's just so many good ideas, and there's so many people that just want this to succeed. And uh, honestly, I think what's really made this happen is just the community. It's yeah. just uh, thousands of people, or more than that now, that are just working towards one common goal that benefits everybody. And it's just, just amazing what they can accomplish. Yeah. And, um, the response, that trade bill, uh, I mean, we've received, I'm sure we're over 5,000 users now, probably well above that now. Um, I get an email about it every 15 seconds, and I try to answer every single one as quick as I can, but um, can't always do that. So it's, it's been a huge success. Um, we've made a real goal to uh, stay in communication with all the users. Um, so it's just, I don't know if I want to say we're surprised, but we didn't, yeah, we're surprised. We didn't expect that big of a response that fast. So um, we're hiring all kinds of people, and um, we actually had to uh, screw our payment on the so I to, to throw that out there. Um, as far as like in the beginning we accepted money packs so we're no longer accepting money packs um, we are going to continue to accept uh, wire transfers and uh, all the other payment options though. okay yeah the Bitcoin is a community thing it is definitely uh, a team effort everything that happens is is a, is a community. You know, there's a lot of talk about trust in the community because we're talking about money. We're not talking about email. We're not even talking about credit card numbers that can be stopped. We're talking about money, like cash. And so one of the things that uh, is mentioned all the time is trust. But we were talking about this the other day. You know, so far, I, I haven't met anybody in the Bitcoin community that has uh, failed to be trustworthy, except for the, you know, there, there have been a couple uh, hijacks of, uh, you know, but we don't know who they who they are. But as far as people who are in the community and uh, you know public figures or whatever in the community, they so far nobody has proved to be untrustworthy, which is a really really it says a lot for the people involved in Bitcoin because they're they freedom. Uh, the people who respect and appreciate the values of freedom and openness and open source and all that, and it's a beautiful thing. Even though Bitcoin can be, you know, we say it's like cash, it can be in, as anonymous as you want it to be and so on. People um, generally, they're not hiding. They're just normal people that just respect freedom and, and care about this. So it's, a, it's definitely a, a, a community effort. By the very design, it's designed to be a community thing. That's true. Everybody true. has to put in their part or now with a new client. They don't even have to mind, but right. that's what I always thought was a great aspect of it. Just right. getting everybody involved, and then everybody in that community has the same incentive to make sure that it succeeds and grows. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Then it's, it's also educating the whole world about what free open source software is, too. The, uh, the concepts behind free open source software are very... Uh, unique and, and most of the public don't even understand that. But you know, you were su saying you're surprised about the uh, success of Trade Hill right off the bat. But you know, you made the right choice because you became a sponsor on Only One TV. So of course, like I said, when you become a sponsor on Only One TV, you hire a whole PR firm. You know, we're, uh, we you know we were we spent the day on Saturday with Business Week and Smarter Money was the day before New York Observer. You know, yesterday. Al Al just what? The Observer article? That came out online, right? That was really cool. Did you see that yet? New York Observer did a great article. Yeah, it just came out. And then Al Jazeera English is about to come out any minute. And then tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., I guess we're going to be um, uh, doing uh, Bloomberg. Sorry, Bloomberg. Yes, that's huge. So, yeah, it's like all this all this press and stuff. Bitcoin is exploding right now in the media. So it's a um, very, very interesting time. i got to say, it makes me nervous. It's just being the technical lead. Yeah, because I, I know they're going to be growing pains uh, mm -hmm. as we scale up, and uh, <laughs> I'm just hoping we're not setting expectations too high. That's that's my one. Uh, what kind of expectations? My one word. Could we be setting too high? 
Well, you know, as transaction volume scales up, people, well, we've already seen, for example, people having trouble getting connected to the network. Mm -hmm. If they, you know, download and run the Bitcoin client, right. um, you know, we just we we just fix that for now at least. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's trying to move carefully so that we don't break things, right? While also things are breaking because they were scaling up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mm -hmm. it's a big challenge. Yeah, and but the good thing is that like all I think of any technology project project since the invention of computers. There's never been a project like this where so many eyes are on it, right? It's true. And it's not just in, people are invested in other projects, but not money. Right. You know, we're talking about money. So all, the, all these coders all over the planet are um, not only invested with their time, their energy in coding it and reviewing the code and all that, but they're actually putting their money into it and talking their parents into putting their money into it and so on and so on. So they really literally have a huge investment monetarily in it. So. So many are I you must be getting feedback from people everywhere with suggestions. <laughs> I do my email box is a very interesting place for uh, last six I'm months or bad. so. I get bad. a email from people all over the world interested in opening exchanges or interesting projects or you know, lately it's been press interviews. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's you need to have, like, I have an assistant, I have two, I have one assistant here, and I have one in Uzbekistan, and I have one in Egypt, and you can pay them by Bitcoin. Actually, there's a little interesting story about that, the, the, the one in Uzbekistan, you know, uh, I had paid him $100, which is like phenomenal, his mother is a pediatric physician, works full time at the hospital, she makes $200 a month in Uzbekistan, and I paid him $100, right, and um, then, and he, and he didn't want it, he didn't need it right then. Okay, so whatever. So I put it. In, I said, oh, "How about I put it in Bitcoin for you?" And this was months and months ago. And he forgot about it. And he actually emailed me. He said, "Can I borrow fifty dollars?" And I was like, well, "What you, you have?" have. Right, exactly. Yeah. I was like, have you seen your balance? And he's like, "I told him what it was. I forgot. It was like forty five hundred dollars or something." Yeah. And he's like, wow. "Yeah." He was like, "Oh my gosh, you're a genius." <laughs> I said, "Nah." It's Satoshi and Gavin. <laughs> I'm not the genius. I just talk about it. Well, and the community. I mean, I think the, the idea that it's a community, it really is a community effort. Totally. You know, I mean, I've been kind of thrust into the lead role mm -hmm. uh, somewhat reluctantly. Um, and I, I may eventually step back from that just because, you know, I actually, frankly, prefer working on technical problems than talking to the press right. or, you know... Sure. Hearing about all the latest crazy business plan, all this other stuff. What's well, the highest, the, 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 the highest good? You know, that like we found this ancient Mac and we made it a teleprompter. You want to, you want to use your skills where they're right. best used, and yep. the, leave the people who are not very bright like me just to talk about it. <laughs> and you can actually make it work, make it happen. Have you? When was the last time you you uh, chatted with Satoshi? <laughs> um, I haven't had. Email from Satoshi uh, in a couple months, actually. Yeah. Um, the last email I sent him, actually, I told him I was going to talk at the CIA. So wow. it's possible that that may have um, had something to do with his deciding. This would be yeah, like, it's probably a good time, um, yeah, too. But he, he had actually said before that that he was going to be busy with other, other stuff and he was going to be stepping back. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so what's he doing now? <laughs> We're going to get some t-shirts made, because I somebody in the forum had this, you probably saw this idea, they had black t-shirts, this I am Satoshi Nakamoto. Is yeah, my, Nakamoto? Uh, yep. Yeah. My question was, could they make me a t-shirt that says, I am not Satoshi? Yeah, I saw that. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Everyone yeah. thinks you are. See, the press asks it all the time. I know. Mm -hmm. Somebody was using that pseudonym in the cha in the uh, our chat room, our live chat room, yeah. it's Satoshi. Nakamoto and and I was in, it was only two people at the moment and so uh, and somebody came in and go oh my gosh my two favorite people Satoshi and Bruce are both in the chat Ooh. it's like oh yeah well see now that's proof I'm not Satoshi <laughs> we were both in the chat room at the same time proof proof positive <laughs> so um, well this is probably a good moment to uh, again thank our sponsors you know the uh, the Bitcoin show is now a daily show Monday through Friday every every day at 2 p.m. Eastern time New York time and it's a global show so uh, tune in at only one TV.com every day and we also have the El Show the Bitcoin in Espanol on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern time which is weekly which is really phenomenal because we're going to reach the whole Spanish language world oh my gosh there's so much to talk about we decided to do that because we sit around talking about Bitcoin every day anyway we figured we may as well just you know do it on the air so uh, but, our, but we have four sponsors now that have uh, specifically targeted the Bitcoin show because they're Bitcoin enthusiasts and they are Ambivert Creative 
Ambivert is A-M-B-I-V-E-R-T creative.com. They're the ones that create your corporate identity. So you have a business, you have a new startup, you're, you're going to set up a website, a shopping cart, whatever it is, and you need a really cool looking logo and a really cool looking identity so that all the colors match and it looks really professional. You want it to look Fortune 400, right? So you contact Ambivert Creative. They know what they're doing. And of course, they accept Bitcoin naturally. And uh, BlueCanaryNightlight.com. Check it out. Just go to BlueCanaryNightlight.com and look at this lovely little Blue Canary Nightlight. You know, it sounds goofy, but when you see it, you're going to go, oh, I need one of those. I didn't realize I needed one. And they accept Bitcoin. It's very cool. You need one for your daughter. Oh, yeah, I love the song. You know, the song? It's, uh, They Might Be Giant song. Really? Uh, it is, yes. <laughs> I didn't even know that. It's, it's from the lyrics to They Might Be Giant song. There's a little oh. Blue Canary Nightlight. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, we need to make that the thing. So if you're a They Might Be Giants <laughs> fan, you gotta buy one. You Actually, gotta buy one. <laughs> I gotta buy one for a couple friends who are They Might Be Giants fans. I heard I was reading their website and they've got a whole, they've got a huge fan base on Facebook and they've got all these people saying how great their product is. So I want. Oh one. my gosh! Okay, well order. You know, yeah. they accept Bitcoin and you know the prices keep falling in Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> Next is BitcoinBonus.com. Bitcoin Bonus is, like I was saying before, Bitcoin Bonus is really cool. I actually, before I even, uh, I, I'd heard about them, but before they became a sponsor, I got an email and a phone call the same day from two different people who said, have you heard of this thing, Bitcoin Bonus? It's really cool. One guy's a website designer, and he sets up hosting accounts for his clients like a couple, you know, two, three a week. And he was saying, every time I uh, set up a, a new hosting account for one of my clients, I get, at that time it was like 50 Bitcoin. I don't know if that's still true. But whatever, you get some number of Bitcoin every single time he sets up an account. And I saw that they have, what, don't they have like buy.com and bestbuy.com and trade on there? Everything's on there. Like almost everything you would ever want to shop at is on there. So you go to bitcoinbonus.com and that's, uh, you know, um, he's the guy who set up the meetup in Washington, D.C. too. So if you go to meetup.com and do a search for Bitcoin, you'll, you'll meet, uh, uh, meet him. But yeah, it's an awesome, awesome uh, benefit to the, to the Bitcoin world, to all the, every shopper, really. And then if you, don't, if you want to know how to get some Bitcoin, you, don't know, you know, whatever, rather than just buying it or mining it, if that's difficult for you, just shop. <laughs> Who doesn't shop? And then uh, finally, last but not least, TradeHill.com, the uh, new easiest way to buy Bitcoin online. So you go to TradeHill.com and uh, make sure that you use referral code, what is it, TH-R141, right? T <laughs> so when you go to TradeHill.com, uh, when you sign up for your TradeHill.com account, which is free, of course, just click sign up, put in your name and whatever, email address, it doesn't have to be your real name, and then put in this referral code and you're going to get 10% off of all your transactions for the life of your account. So that's uh, TH-R141, okay, and then you get 10% off for the, for the life of your account. And be sure and thank all of our sponsors, that tell them that you appreciate the Bitcoin show because otherwise we wouldn't be here. We'd be at home just watching our Bitcoins grow. All right. So thanks, guys. I so, wanted to ask um, Galvin, um, once you actually did the talk at the CIA, uh, were you approached by any of the other companies like PayPal or Visa, MasterCard, or any other merchant processors? Like, did they give you any feedback on Bitcoin? Like, what were their thoughts on that? They did. Actually, had a. Well, I actually attended a dinner the night before for the speakers, and um, got to chat a little bit with them. I mean, they weren't. They weren't decision makers, right? So they're not the kind of people who uh, who make the decision about whether they could possibly accept bitcoins or not. But had good conversations, and most of them um, hadn't heard of bitcoins before they saw the list of speakers for the conference. Okay. And so I think it was great just to you know put bitcoin out there as mm -hmm. there's this new thing. Um, and, um, the, what was like their feedback? Was it positive? Um, Oh, it was very positive. I mean, everybody, I think everybody thinks Bitcoin's a great idea. It's, I presented it uh, in my talk as an experiment because I really do see it as an experiment. There's all sorts of... Everybody does. How can you All sorts of things to figure out. Yeah. Um, which for, I mean, one of the other speakers actually was the CEO of um, Heartland Payments, which is a huge payment processor. And they had him there because they had a, a gig gigantic data breach. That's a... That's the Mastercard Visa payment processor. Isn't yes. It? Yeah. 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 They sell, you know, the little readers that yeah. you swipe your cards through. Right. Um, well, they had a data breach. They had a huge data breach, wow. and which almost killed their company. Wow. Um, and they're like the fourth largest payment 
processing company in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he talked about you know how they worked through having this huge data breach, how the data breach happened, how the hackers got in, mm -hmm. um, and how how they recovered from it. Um, and, you know, he is a decision maker. You know, mm -hmm. he could decide. You know, when you swipe, it's going to be some some way of doing bitcoins. Wow. But you know, they're going to wait and see, right? Bitcoin's That's way true. too cutting edge. It's, it's still very liquid. Yeah. Uh, way too liquid, very volatile, you know. One day you could be something, buying something, one Bitcoin, the other day it could be, you know, a millionth of a Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, they have all these new APIs that are going to tap into, like, Trade Hill and find out what's the what's the value right now compared to a U.S. dollar. So if you're charging $15 for that T-shirt, then it'll be able to quote it in Bitcoins, like, up, up to the minute and so on. So, you know, because, it, yeah, it changes. You see something that was one Bitcoin, and it was used to be a dollar. Right, and now it's what is it? Twenty, thirty? You know, it's like crazy. So yeah, you, but these anybody who has a website that sells things in Bitcoin, you have to constantly either constantly lower the price consistently, and um, or have one of these automated systems. Jared, are you are you guys doing anything to, for uh, to give merchants an, an API that they can uh, tap into the current last price? Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's definitely on the list. Um, it might be available, but you have to talk to the program. Um, one thing that's, uh, we've received so much volume that uh, we haven't done as much uh, development as we'd like to. You know, we're, we're doing a lot of processing right now. Uh, we anticipate you know, a few people coming in there, make sure the transactions are going good, and do some more development. Instead, uh, day one, we just got slammed. And instead, from day one, we said, we need a lot more people. <laughs> So we just immediately start hiring people, um, calling friends we know that are really well qualified, mm -hmm. and just saying, hey, you want a job? Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're based in Chile, and I called friends in the U.S., and I said, hey, why don't you play a ticket to Chile tomorrow? Will you come work for me? And I said, will. Sure. <laughs> so, um, as long as you're putting Bitcoin. It's, it's good Bitcoin, and uh, out of their volume, um, things are getting, we're, we're getting with the groove and everything, so we're going to really start pushing out a lot more. Cool. Uh, Cool, we're breaking up a little bit on Skype. We're breaking up a little bit on the Skype. It's, it, it must be chilly. It's not New York. Hopefully it's not the CIA. Yeah, that's it. They're, they're, they're taking packets. They're taking packets. They're, like, they're monitoring us. But you can still hear us, right? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Cool. It's funny to think you've only been open a week and we're already talking about these kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to see a lot more development. Uh, yeah. We've got some really, really cool stuff coming. Um, we've got amazing feedback. I mean, every week we get 20 to 50 people that email us and say, hey, why don't you implement this? Or can I help you with this? And uh, the community is just amazing. So cool. um, you're going to start seeing a lot of really cool stuff. That's awesome. There's so many things happening, and I um, I wanted to mention um, one of the one of the coolest things that Bitcoin has going for it is uh, a site and a service called ClearCoin.com. Have you heard of that, Gavin? I know. Yeah. About it, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Gavin founded uh, a site which a site service called ClearCoin.com, which is very, very needed because it, the way I describe it is it, it actually does what PayPal claims to do because people use PayPal because they think that PayPal is going to stand behind them when they have a transaction. If the person's not legit, they're going to get their money back, which may or may, or may not happen, or maybe the exact opposite. But with ClearCoin actually gives Bitcoin a way to, uh, to escrow the payment. So if you, don't trust the, is it if you don't trust the seller or if you don't trust the buyer, either way. Yeah, either way, I mean, the buyers and sellers can basically put their coins in escrow and they're not released until buyer and seller are both happy. They're both happy. And if the transaction goes bad, there's actually two choices, um, which you set up before creating the escrow and you, the buyer and seller need to negotiate. Mm -hmm. Either the funds will eventually get returned to the, um, the person who's providing the coins mm -hmm. um, or you can set up a charity escrow where the coins, you know, if buyer and seller can agree, the coins will get donated to a charity. Cool. Um, and so, I mean, what if, what if it goes bad and I like uh, I shipped my HDTV to somebody and they claim that they didn't get it and it goes bad and then my coins are donated to charity? Uh, <laughs> How does that? 
Well, their coins are donated to charity, right? So if you're providing the good... Their coins are charity, yeah. If you're so, yeah. providing the, the physical good, then, yeah, the charity will get the coins instead of you. Mm -hmm. um, so there's still some trust issues yeah. there in that, you know, if, if, if the person on the other end of the transaction you would rather the coins go to charity than to you, and they're willing to take a hit to their reputation <laughs> yeah. as somebody, a deadbeat, who doesn't, yeah. you know, lose his coins. <laughs> it screws you. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good thing to have in, in any case, because because Bitcoin is basically cash, right? It's, it's cash-like, of course, but you can think of it as cash. Yeah, and with, just like with cash, if you're going to, you know, give, you're going to meet some stranger on the street corner who's going to open his trunk and give you an HD TV and you're never going to see him again, you're going to give him cash, you better know who you're doing business with. That's like anything else. Yeah, well, the truth is, I mean, there are a whole bunch of things I'd love to do for ClearCoin, but this little other project has <laughs> kind of gotten in the way. Yeah, so, I bet so. You know, How's the volume with ClearCoin? Is it, like, overwhelming as well? or? Uh, no, it's, it's, it's been manageable. Mm. Well, after this show, it will probably be overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to hire some more people in Uzbekistan and, and Egypt. Is that an automated process, or is that manually? It is completely automated. Oh, so, that's good. Um, well, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so you know, I, I set it up to be completely automated. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because it does. It, if, if, I had to, if I had to step in and resolve every dispute, or had to hire somebody to step in and resolve disputes, then I'd have to charge what credit card companies charge. Well, he's an expert developer. If, it, if, they, if you said it wasn't automated, I would be really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> We have little elves in the tree who do all the work. <laughs> well, since you're the lead developer of the Bitcoin client, um, what do you guys have in the pipeline? Um, is there anything usability-wise? And um, I guess the hot topic now would be security-wise for Bitcoin. Right. Because, you know, a lot of people don't realize that now if they have a wallet on their laptop, they're carrying a laptop you know, that's worth $10,000, maybe even more, even $500. It has monetary value attached to it. So... Is there anything in the pipeline that's going to facilitate that? Or? Yeah, the, the target for the next big release, so the, the 0.4 Bitcoin release, the, the big feature that is in the process of you know moving carefully because we don't want to lose people's coins mm -hmm. is um, encrypting your private keys. So right. allowing you to set a password that you have to enter just before you send the transaction. So you don't you don't enter it when Bitcoin starts up, but before a transaction, you'd have to enter your password. Mm -hmm. That doesn't give you 100% security because if there's some bad software, keyboard logger virus, or, exactly, yeah. keyboard logger virus, Windows. whatever. <laughs> there's yeah. a nasty virus called Windows. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, it doesn't it it certainly doesn't solve the problem, but it does make mm -hmm. the problem better in that, like for example, if you back up your wallet mm -hmm. and you don't back it up encrypted, mm -hmm. then you know it will be backed up with you know encrypted private keys attached to your password. So oh, your so backups will be safer, for example. So the new client, the wallet won't be encrypted, but the keys inside of the wallet will be encrypted? Yeah, exactly. Yep. So it's kind of like the same thing as your wallet being encrypted? It is, yes. Okay. Well, and, and effectively. Effectively. I mean, if, if we encrypted the entire wallet, then you'd have to type your password at startup. Oh, gotcha. Which is a security risk because... Right, every time you... Then yeah. your wallet is in memory, unencrypted, and it's much better just to Smart. enter the password when you have to send the keys. You actually have... You have a chance for your, you know, virus software to run and figure out that there's something bad on your system. See, Satoshi is pretty smart. I mean, I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really smart because you don't want to, you don't want to enter your password every time. Yeah, you only most of the time you just go in and you look at your balance and you maybe get an address and send somebody an address and all those things. You there's routine tasks. There's only occasionally when you want to actually send a payment that you need to enter, enter it. And so only a keyboard logging uh, virus would be able to grab your password. And then, because that's a really, really big issue because we have the, we created the site called BitcoinMe.com, which is kind of like the Bitcoin for the average person. In, or, you know, it's, an, it's again, a, uh, a living document. It's a, you know, ever changing and improving. But the uh, biggest obstacle we have, I mean, besides buying Bitcoin, now we have Trade Hill and, and these, uh, and also local exchanges, which are great. So it's easier to buy and sell Bitcoin, of course. The other one is security, absolutely. And that's so many people have invested in Bitcoin and now they have a really significant, it used to be pocket change and then a month's, a month's salary. And now they have like, some people have a real significant amount of money there. And they're like, oh, what do I do? Right. Well, you got bit bills, but you know that's even that you're going to end up with a physical shoebox or something that you got to deal with. So, if it, and it kind of defeats. I mean, bit bills are great for what they're great for, but they're, it also kind of defeats one of the advantages that it's electronic and it's virtual. And if it's encrypted, you could actually put it out there somewhere and make it accessible through the web, and then just you have it. You know, no matter where you go, you can get.
get it. Yeah, there's actually a misconception where like Bitcoin, like how Bitcoin works is actually works through encryption. Right. It uses public key cryptography, but nothing's actually encrypted. That's is that right. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I actually found that out today. You know, catching old Bitcoin news, and I was like, oh, you know, that's really mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Well, doing doing encryption right is hard. Yes. You know, I mean, to really, you know, you do it right. Make sure you know, there's no possible way to get in, and and like I said, the next version will be better. It'll be a step towards mm -hmm. um, more, even more solu secure solutions in the future. And and really, the only way to get you know like 99.99 percent security is to involve two different devices. So you can imagine having to start a Bitcoin transaction on your. Um, computer and then verify it on your cell phone, for example. Mm. Is that going to be in the client? That won't be in the, well... Not in this version. Not, definitely not in this version. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's, uh -huh. that's what I want to move towards yeah. and, and go towards. That would be um, slick. There are a bunch of technical issues, not the least of which is, you know, sending information to a cell phone. How do you do that? Is there Especially internationally, globally. Carry, exactly. Carriers. Carrier fees. Is there open source to do that? Um, right. you know, there's, there's lots of issues there. So it, it might end up being, you know, that might be solved by, you know, another Bitcoin client. That, that comes another Bitcoin with client with a, with a stat, like a registered IP address or somehow. Maybe, or maybe something. an app that runs on your cell phone or, yeah. So something like I mean, that. Is the hackathon working towards that? There, yeah, that's right. Well, there, yeah, there, there, that's right. Uh, our hackathon here, we have a, we host a hack, we host a Bitcoin meetup once, uh, which is on meetup.com slash Bitcoin, and that happens monthly here. And then uh, there's three spinoff groups from that. There's a weekly hackathon every Saturday, and then a promotathon of volunteers who want to help volunteer to do all sorts of things to help promote, like creating, you know, entering businesses into the directory and charities that accept Bitcoins and all that. And then the uh, legal think tank we're trying to form, but so far we've only been getting, you know, 99% of our inquiries, like, we want to know what the legal think tank thinks. And we're still trying to get some lawyers in the legal think tank to think. But anyway, that, the hackathon is very, very uh, uh, productive. We, they've already created the Android app. For in the, it's in the app market, which is in beta. You don't want to put, you know, you don't want to put much, just you know, alpha. Okay, so you only want to put, you know, some play coins in there. But it's really cool, and it's getting better all the time. Now they're working on, you know, really improving that. But yeah, that's one of the things they're working on with it, uh, some sort of, a, I don't really quite understand it, but something where uh, another client, that would be fast, and it would be um, the. I think it would be the. Well, somehow the keys are encrypted from the inception, and there's some part in the cloud so that it's backed up, and the yeah. backup has like the, they have the password and you have the file, and they, there's another copy where they have the file and you have the password. So the cloud never has both at the same time, but it is backed up, something like that, they, which is needed. They're also talking about something where um, because the blockchain is going to be an issue. Uh, I think the blockchain is like two, three hundred meg right now. But that could grow exponentially as the volume of transactions grow. Yeah, so I've I often wondered about that. One of the issues that they wanted to attack early on was how do they get the relevant part of the blockchain um, into the client? This way, you know, when you download, you know, not many phones have the capacity you know, right. to hold the entire blockchain. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. Well, you know, the, the hackathon, the, the uh, Bitcoin app for Android, uh, it's, it's, they call themselves BitcoinLabs.com. Our hackathon group has created this thing, BitcoinLabs.com. So it's, the app is just called Bitcoin, and it's by Bitcoin Labs. That They actually have a, a, like a server. They call it an, uh, an end node or something like that. I'll probably get it wrong. I'll be, I'll be corrected. Uh, but anyway, it, it actually is only, it's not used for anything too secure except to check your own balance. So it goes out and it, it reads the whole entire blockchain and just sends you your balance. So there's that, that part, which, yeah, you know, which it, it doesn't, it's, it's not secure because it doesn't matter. Even if it made a mistake, you can't spend what you don't have. Right. But it does uh, let it t check the balance and so that way your phone doesn't have, the, have to have the whole entire blockchain. So I think there'll be a lot of innovation like that. Yeah, you know? definitely. Um, I just remember something that I really wanted to ask you. Um, <laughs> All right, a uh, big issue that was seen with mining uh, yeah. was that DeepBit, uh, which is the biggest mining pool out there, they control nearly 50% of the actual mining capacity. And a lot of people are worried about certain attacks that could arise from that. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be, um, you know, have evil intentions. Right. But it could be that they just get compromised and then they use that to advantage. The most I guess worst case scenario I could think of because the attack is very limited in what the attacker could do. Um, it would be what if you know um, somebody who's connected with a central bank or something along the lines of that. You know they prevent 
Bitcoin transactions from actually being verified. Um, I was just wondering, what are your thoughts? Because you probably have uh, more interesting insight or more useful insight you know, than many people would have. Yeah, well, Tycho actually had a really interesting suggestion in the forums that I haven't had a chance to, to think through. But, but basically, the idea is all of the people who are connected to a mining pool would monitor the mining pool for bad behavior. And if they notice that the mining pool like reversed a bunch of blocks, or that the mining pool will reverse the block and also reverse some transactions in that block, they could just stop mining. Right. And so that would make it much harder for even if a mining pool got more than 50%, you know, if it tried to do anything bad, then all of the people who are supporting that mining pool would say, well, yeah. Nope, we're just going to stop and, and let the other pools, we'll move to another pool or, or, or whatever. And I, I think that's a really good idea. And, and the fact that it was Tycho who runs DeepBit, who yeah. suggested it. Yeah, because he uh, doesn't have any bad intentions. Exactly. It's just that the, the growing, anybody could just compromise it and then it becomes a risk to the whole entire Bitcoin right. community. And you don't even need 50%. It's not a magical number. Right. Somebody could be running 15 or 20%, but it's just going to be exponentially lower that the type would be successful. <laughs> Yeah, so writing some code in the in the individual miners that that looks for that and you know and does and disconnects or stops mining if if they notice funky things happening where you know we'll have to be careful to define what a funky thing is you know because because yeah. funky things do happen on the yeah. Bitcoin network yeah, and sure. it's yeah. it's it's pretty resilient to uh, to most funky things like the forks and things. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm okay. With the hack of that, yeah, we have so many things. Um, we should do the show every day. You need to be here every day. Anyway, the hackathon guys, they, 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 of course, they talk about this. And you know, everybody, you know, it's just like the forums. The, the hackathon often turns into like a real life forum, just like our show. But one of the things that they talk about is security, obviously. And they're always trying to figure out a new way to break the system, of course, right. to figure out what could happen, what could go wrong, because that's what security is about. And uh, one of the things that they, they talk about is, and I think that you've touched on that here, with miners, but also just with anybody as a whole. A lot of, uh, like one of the projects that they're talking about is, I call it a uh, fire alarm, where uh, monitoring systems, and there could be, this could be happening by different groups of people all over the world who are watching that ledger. And, and anyone could watch it and look. If there was a transaction, an older transaction that suddenly got changed, boom, red alert. Like, it could absolutely yeah. tweet an SMS everyone and say, stop, halt, you know. Something I mean, lucky. it could trigger Actually, maybe that could even exist in a, in a Bitcoin client where it says, boom, amber alert, red alert, there's something wrong, go to this site, almost like a virus or something. That you, if you see something that's like drastically wrong, it should not ever happen. Isn't that taken care of by the blockchain where the actual full blockchain that has already been verified in the past to actually change an old transaction would require an exponential amount more power than what's even available today? Isn't that how it works? Yes. So, yeah, I mean, as... as as our hashing power has grown exponentially, unbelievably, <laughs> and we're now what, like, difficulty went up like fifty eight percent again, or something. forty times larger than the world's largest supercomputer, or something crazy. Um, wow. <laughs> um, I think that is becoming less of an issue, although the concentration of power in these mining pools yeah, it is, it is, is I think, a bigger issue. Now, with the whole policing thing, would that have to be an offshoot of the actual Bitcoin project, or would that be up to the actual mining uh, developers to take care of that? Um, it would probably be, well, I'm imagining the code would be written by somebody kind of involved in the miners. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. You know, anybody. It's gonna be interesting. Anybody can submit patches and. Uh, and actually, anybody can watch for this. You don't have to be part of the mining pool to watch for those discrepancies. Right. You don't. Now, I would love to see a uh, a site like, um, what is it, Bitcoin Monitor or Bitcoin Watch? Oh, you know, yes. one of those. Yeah, um, look for double spins. Yeah. It would be great for somebody to just try to connect to as many nodes in the network as they can, and watch for attempted double spins. I mean, um, even if it, I mean, of course, the Bitcoin network is designed to prevent that, but. It's just like the building is designed to not right. have a fire, but if there's a if there's a something completely unexpected that happens, it's just really really important that it's, that it's discovered immediately. Yeah, well, so that it's things can stop. It's been really helpful to me to to look at is it Bitcoin Watch that has a list of unconfirmed transactions? Mm, I, sure. I forget which website has a, has a big list of unconfirmed transactions, oh, and yeah. just you know. It's, it's like, charts, I think. I think, I think it might be. Yeah. Um, and, but that's you know, as a developer, that's super helpful to me to mm -hmm. look at. You know, is the networking code doing what it's supposed to? What is and that? 
I'm sorry to interrupt. What does that mean? Unconfirmed. I know, those are those are transactions that are out there, and the miners have decided not to include them. The miners have either decided not to include them because they don't include enough fees, or they're they're they involve a small number of bitcoins, and they haven't matured enough, or they depend on some other transaction, and just you know, is it, the transactions is it, got out of order. Is it important for? the average Bitcoin user to run the client to be a peer on the network for the strength and protection of the network? No, not really. Just okay. No, I mean, yeah, miners give the strength and protection. Um, I mean, it, it helps if you or are seeing a sudden influx of users who don't have uh, ports on their firewall open. So they're making eight outgoing connections and not accepting any incoming connections. Is that bad for that? That, that can be kind of bad for the health of the network. So mm -hmm. if you can turn on universal plug and play and connect to the network, that actually does help if you, can, if you have more than eight connections. Mm -hmm. um, that's supported within the client? Universal yeah, that's, plug and play? yep, the latest versions of the client have a checkbox for universal plug and play. So if we can, if we can educate people to how to turn on uh, your BNB in their router and yeah. then run the client with that on, yeah. then that will help strengthen the network? Yes, and, and they can tell easily. If you run in the client and for a while and you only have eight connections, how many should you have? And then on? you're not accepting incoming connections because Bitcoin will make eight outgoing connections oh, and then accept that's why as many. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's only eight people in Manhattan. That's why. I don't know. That's why. So, so you're part of the problem. I don't have that anymore. <laughs> and then once I got my electric bill, no, no, that was it. But I, you know, that's what I want to. Yeah, I want to advocate it. If there's something that will that, that the average user can do to help strengthen the network, that it actually takes some of that market share of mining away from the mining pools. That seems like it would it'd be it'd more, I don't know, it'd be uh, better for the health of the network. Although you, they can only run it as fast as their, their uh, CPU with a normal client, Very right? Very ineffective. Yeah, Very this, ineffective. yeah, CPU mining probably Not even just a bad it. idea. It doesn't even, it's, it's kind of bad for the environment. Okay. You know, you're wasting yeah. electricity. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. So. Okay. I would like to ask a question about for the normal viewers here that are not technical. Yeah. Like, what do you? You probably get this question all the time. What do you recommend as far as to store your bitcoins? Where and how and for safety right now today? Oh, because there's yeah, a lot of things that work. Right. But what right. today? Well, um, well, it, it depends on how many you have, right? So. Uh, you, if you if you have as many bitcoins as you would carry around New York in your back pocket in your wallet, then I don't think you need to do anything special. I mean, but you should be prepared. You may get mugged, right? You, you may lose them. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if you have a lot more than that, um, then it's hard right now. Quite frankly, um, you know, before I went to France, actually, I thought real hard about how to keep my bitcoin safe in case somebody burgled my house and. Mm -hmm. Took my computer and took mm -hmm. my, you know, backup drive, and yeah. and so um, I actually spent some time making sure that I, I copied my wallet file, um, mm -hmm. you know, very carefully copied mm -hmm. my wallet file, encrypted it, um, and made sure that you know the the, the encrypted version was safe, uh, and then backed that up, um, and actually you know took my my backup disks. And put them in a safe in my basement yeah. because you know if somebody took those discs, mm -hmm. they're probably ba they're backups copies. That if you get a copy of the wallet, then you, know, you have access. You have the private keys. You have the so private keys, and you can spend them. Assign a new owner to them. Yeah, so you really have to think about you know where are all the places my wallet has been, mm -hmm. and either make sure that they're erased. Um, and if you can't, if you've lost track of your wallet, you know, maybe it got backed up somewhere on mm -hmm. somebody's disk, or maybe that laptop that I gave to my brother-in-law, mm -hmm. then probably what you want to do is is make a new wallet and send all of your coins. Spend them from the old one to the new one. Yeah, yeah. Actually actually the old one to the new one. How about for the less technical, is there any other more direct route that doesn't require... Buy, oh, buy oh. bit bills. Oh, buy bit bills. <laughs> yeah, that's what's recommending. That'll, that'll work. That's what um, we recommend. And that's, and frankly, you know, I, I wanted to give my mom, uh, I promised to give my mom 100 bitcoins a while ago. And, uh, <laughs> now you're rethinking it. Well, no, I, I'm going to do it. Um, <laughs> Get ready to go. I promise tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but I'm sending her bit bills because yeah. I don't trust that she doesn't have any viruses running on her computer. Right. And she's, she's not technical. I asked Doug, I said, can you come out with a 1,000 Bitcoin denomination? <laughs> It'll eventually go to numismatic. Because you know how it would be cool to have a $1,000 bill? It'd be so cool. Because you can have a 1,000 Bitcoin denomination, you know? Someday, who knows what that'll be worth. And do you recommend it? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Exactly. So we want <laughs> we're running short on time, but um, we have a big announcement, right, Jared? You still with us? I wasn't sure we're gonna do that. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We saved it for the very end because we know people are hanging in with us because uh, Gavin's here and we're all here. This is so cool. But um, uh, you want me to you want me to say it or you want to? I was just gonna say something real quick. Go ahead. I think one of the coolest things about Bitcoin, especially Bitcoin in the beginning, was um, the Bitcoin faucet. Um, and I mean, I don't think Gavin knows who my, uh, I, what my ID was on the uh, forums. We can talk about that later. But Gavin and I used to talk about the faucet quite a bit. And uh, we thought it was really cool. And then it started getting abused. Uh, that it feels like anything cool and good is going to be abused. So, um, but the point is, it brought a lot of people into Bitcoins. Um, so, Back when it was, uh, I think, 0.05 Bitcoin, which now seems like a lot, um, it, it just it, it just brought all kinds of people to Bitcoin. It, it gave them a chance to experiment with it, to use it, and to see how it worked. So basically, um, I'll let Bruce take it from there, but uh, we're looking at basically uh, the faucet 2.0 that you can use in real life. So, um, Bruce, you want to okay. take that for him? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. This is the announcement. Uh, TradeHill.com in conjunction with Only TV, Only One TV, got it right? Only One TV and TradeHill are uh, announcing uh, so a really amazing thing. We're going to create a one-time event. Call, we're calling it uh, maybe a one-time event. I know I shouldn't say that, right? <laughs> a, a, a first, a first event, <clears throat> a first. Who knows? Maybe recurring. Uh, called Bitcoin Fire Hybrid. <laughs> appropriate for New York City, uh, but it's going to be a, an event where we give away free Bitcoins. I said I call it the Great American Bitcoin Giveaway, and it, a lot of it is about save Bitcoin. We want to, we really want to get the message out to the to the world that Bitcoin is for ordinary people. It's not just, it's not for you know criminals or anything like that. This Bitcoin is just like the cash in your pocket. It's for ordinary people to buy and sell and transact, whether it's coffees or you know coffee or toaster or, or lunch or. Uh, you know, what is paying our rent? You know, we, we pay our, our rent for this studio in Bitcoin, <laughs> by the way. Our landlord insisted on it. Wow. So, I yeah, know, it's like, well. Watch for the IRS. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's on them because we're paying them. So, anyway. But, um, anyway, so Bitcoin Fire Hydrant is going to be an event starting today. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to send out a press release to everybody and we're going to do a fundraising telethon. And this is about if you want to help promote Bitcoin to the masses. And whether you're an individual, you want to donate a Bitcoin, or uh, you are a corporation who wants uh, to donate a, a large number of Bitcoin, you can, and, and also we're going to mention, obviously, the, the larger your donation, the more mention you're going to get um, for your business or whatever it is. And in fact, if you're a very large donor, we're going to talk to me privately because what we'll do is uh, we'll arrange a deal where you're, you pay basically no uh, trans transaction fees on uh, Trade Hill. Uh, Trade Hill has most generously donated that as well. So we're going to do a sort of a telethon. It's going to be kind of like uh, you know Jerry Lewis telethon to, to to get donations between now and uh, July twenty. I'm sorry, uh, June twenty fifth, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I got July here. June twenty fifth. The next ten days. The next ten days. We got ten days, and we're going to raise as many. Remember, this is happening at, in internet speed, right? So we get ten days to raise as much. Bitcoin as we can. Right now, you can go to uh, bitcoinme.com and click on the tab that says Fire Hydrant, Fire Hydrant right? Okay. And soon we registered what? Bitcoinfirehydrant.com. So that's not up yet, but soon. Uh, but right now, go to bitcoinme.com and you can click on the tab called Fire Hydrant. And you're going to see the donation address, which we already set up for this. So you can go there right now and send a Bitcoin or you know, 10,000 Bitcoin, you know, whatever. If you were an early adopter, you probably got, you know, you probably got a million Bitcoin by right now. No, no, I know, I know. I know. I know. People have, I know what people ask me, how many do you have? What are you talking about? I have 21 million. More than 10. <laughs> <laughs> More than 10 and less than 9. I don't know. So anyway, uh, we're going to do this giveaway, and we're going to do the giveaway actually on June 25th. That's a Saturday, June 25th at 11 a.m. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this telethon between now and then every day on the Bitcoin show. We're going to be talking about it. We're going to be raising as many Bitcoin as we can. But you all that you'll be able to look at the blockchain and see how many are donated to that address. And so and we'll be publicly announcing it on that website and on the show. And we're going to raise as many as we can. And you're going to be able to physically get a certain amount. Uh, 
I don't know exactly what it will be. Maybe something like twenty dollars worth of Bitcoin per person, and you uh, everyone will arrive here at 11 a.m. at Only One TV Studios on Fifth Avenue between 30th and 31st. We'll have all that on the site. And you, if you physically stand out here and line up, it's gonna be like an Apple launch. It's gonna be the I Bitcoin launch. <laughs> but then you line up all the way down to Wall Street and in front of the stock exchange, you know, and down Broadway. But anyway, um, just come on out and stand in line and you're gonna get free Bitcoin. We're gonna set you up with a Trade Hill account and put Bitcoin in it. Right, Jared? Exactly, exactly. And depending on how many people donate, it might even be a thousand dollars per person. Wow! You know that he says, depending on how many people donate, you might it might end up being a thousand thousand dollars per person. Maybe who knows? It could. It also depends on the price of Bitcoin. If it goes up tenfold in the next week, then uh, <laughs> it could be even more than that. So yeah. um, basically, there's no limit to what it will be. Yeah. So that's exciting. So we're going to uh, just check out, you know, go to bitcoinme.com and click on uh, the uh, fire hydrant and we'll keep all the details up to date there and we'll be talking about it every day on the show. So uh, that's exciting. <laughs> Free money! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that also helps show people, you know, that Bitcoin is good because now the media looks like they're trying to demonize it, especially with those two senators and Slope Road. So I think that would be really awesome, you know, like any grandma, any person out there, a homeless person, who cares, you know, they can have some Bitcoins and then, you know, that might inspire the people that came here and got Bitcoins to trade for stuff like, hey, you know, That's I'll right. trade your $20 of Bitcoin for this gift card or something like that. And hopefully, you know, that'll be a nice catalyst and more people use it. Exactly. Bitcoin is for donating to charity, for making money fluid to third world countries, it's for monetizing the web, and it's for buying lunch, it's for, for all the, the normal things that human beings use money for. Protecting against fiat currencies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And exactly. Tyranny, tyranny over money. I think, uh, I think the best way to uh, defend Bitcoin and to protect Bitcoin and ensure that it survives is acceptance. Um, obviously, a lot of people are really opposed to Bitcoin right now. Um, well, let me take that back. Maybe it's a smaller group that's really powerful as opposed to. And if the entire United States or the entire world is using Bitcoin, you're going to have a hell of a lot of time telling you you can't use this, it's wrong, it's evil, if, if, if everybody's using it. You know? That's right. Well, we've run out of time. Thank you guys so much. Got it, Grayson. Thank you. Bravo. Bravo. Thank you for Thank stepping you. up to the plate and being a, a Bitcoin developer extraordinaire. And uh, Jared. Oh my God, Trey Hill is amazing. Uh, <laughs> you're rocking the world with so many ways to get money in and out of Bitcoin. It's just amazing. And uh, thank you all for joining us, definitely. Our sponsors. All, all our sponsors. So uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. It was awesome. We'll thank see you, you tomorrow. Here. Same time. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs>